I'm not not a Christian. I, I'm I am a Christian after all. Um, the thing is that you know, uh, I am a Samoan. Angau mai missionary lako attitude nga ele mas missionary ola pasyoki Samoa. Honestly, yes, the Samoans have killed them. It's time for us to make our own decisions. Take off the Oba. Put Tangaloa to replace him. What's wrong with that? Tangaloa Lang was defeated by one of the men named Lu. I don't believe in the God. But the God of the Bible is the God of the Hebrews. Tangaloa is the God of the Polynesian people. You know, my friend uh, Richard or, or Stephen Hawkins is saying, you know, let's look for the answers, you know. And what he's saying is that let's find out whether there is a God. Uh, what I find fascinating is the question that he poses, you know. He says, there must be a beginning. And when you say there must be a beginning, you'll come back to the Aquinas point, you know. There's a prime mover. Somebody, somewhere, made it, you know, in order to exist. So what that is, whether you call it God or whatever, you know, the fact is that when he says there has to be a beginning, and what he's searching for is who is the beginner? <laughs> <laughs>
Polygamy was normal, so Tamafai Nga's quest for additional wives wasn't out of line. Filmmaker Ngal Malamana shared, a man could take for a wife a female by employing the Samoan tactic to imamo, strike and carry. There's no account Tamafai Nga used to imamo or violated marriage customs. So why would Samoans assassinate a man they considered demigod? Williams wrote, they appeared tired of his oppression and tyranny. <laughs> Samoan folk tales speak of mortals rising up to the gods. There's Titi Otalanga who broke the guard Mafuia's arm because Mafuia refused to share fire. Then there's Lossi who overpowered the gods to get Daryl. Though this is a common theme in folk tales, Samoans also revere the gods. Traces of this still prevail. When preparing taro leaves for our luau, the taulele removed the tips of the leaves. One story has it, they reminded Samoans of the eel god, and Samoans will not eat anything that resembles their gods. An hour into our conversation, Lay's granddaughter informed us the taulele were about to uncover the umu. They had luau, New Zealand mutton, taro, and breadfruit. The only thing missing was the number two. When a letter went out to get one, the entire litter had vanished. Anoa used the word tapua fanua. Tapua fanua refers to a god or a itu, ghost, protecting the creatures. But the creatures too can sense danger and go into hiding. One may ask, aren't the aitu behind tapua fanua evil spirits? Mm. <laughs> A well-known class of Aitu is the Insa, sacred ladies, seductive half-human spirits who are known to possess their human female rivals. They are connected with certain villages and pools. We came upon this one while searching for some Ayafis pool in Salikmo. It wasn't associated with the Tainasa, but it gave us a glimpse of pre-Christian Samoa. <laughs> The victims' hairs were hung from a lee tree, according to our young informants, hence the name of the village, Levi. Decapitated parties were set aside for the Maliator. Close by, a hall named Fatitu commemorates Maliator's sons offered to take the place of two young victims. The young man asked to be plated in a palm leaf and presented to his father as an offering instead. Two days later, en route to the island of Savai, our ferry sailed past Malono, Tamafainga's home. From here, Tamafainga imposed a fiction restriction, tapu, on the people of Upolu. Though separated by water, the demigod knew when the tapu was broken and inflicted death on the offender. Was this another instance of a god refusing to share? Or was it a tapu of Anua, 
and Atua or A2, protecting the creatures. From Salilulonga, we drove west to Falealupo to see the card Moso's footprint. Falealupo is where the goddesses Taima and Tilafanga introduced the art of tattooing. It's also home to Pulotu, Samoa's underworld. According to oral tradition, the dead enter Pulotu through two whirlpools, one for high chiefs and the other for common folks. We stopped at the blowholes at Tanga, then bought fresh coconuts from a street vendor on the way out. Drive carefully, he cautioned. We have a tapu of Fanua. The Atu of the road is watching. We caught the sunrise at Sapapali'i where John Williams landed. A monument to Williams stands here, another in the pier, and a third one in Leone Tutuila where the goddess Taima is still honored. In Sabapali, Chief Fawea exhorted Samoans to accept Christianity. Can the religion of these wonderful Bapalangis be anything but wise and good? Let us look at them and then look at ourselves. Their bodies are clothed all over with beautiful cloth, while we have nothing but a bandage of leaves. They have clothes upon their very feet, while ours are like the dogs. Based on material things, Fawea determined the god of the Bapalangi was superior than his. One might say Fawel was the first official missionary to Samoa, not Williams. Still, many Samoans hold the Englishman in high esteem. Others question his motives. Bear in mind that when the Christians came to Samoa and to other places, they were part of the colonizing mission uh, of the English, the French, uh, the Germans, and whoever. Uh, uh, part of that colonizing mission is to destroy, you know, the religion, the culture, the, the worldview, uh, the sacred as understood by them, and replace them with uh, the, the Christian uh, vision. Some argue the missionaries forced Samoans to accept the Christian vision. Anthropologists Lower Holmes are ever wrote, before a village joined the church, the chiefs met. Deliberations were lengthy and insightful, said Williams. He wrote he was impressed with Fawea's intelligence and good sense, especially when Fawea requested him not to begin his work among Samoans by condemning their canoe races, dances, and other amusements. He was considered the wisest. Fawea uh, uh, is Samoa. Who is not even a little and yet he was wise enough to give that now. I had please awake. Ah, I awake, I I I I I I I where Christianity is driving at, and then they will change accordingly. Christian critics tend to amplify the so-called evils of Christianity. Regarding Oceania, Jenny Tepa Daniel writes, the early missionaries imposed much of their own social, political, economic, moral, and sexual preferences and inhibitions upon indigenous peoples, including all those they encountered across Oceania. Another writes, Christianity also has a long history of suppressing women and repressing knowledge of the divine feminism. What will Samoan relationships be without Christianity? Some people will still be more powerful than the rest of the people in Samoa. The men will continue to be the dominant figures in society. Christianity has given us a good path where we can identify that these are the men's roles, there's are the women's roles. I mean, different uh, groups of organizational, organizational uh, uh, groups of Samoa have their own roles to play. We have seen uh, the growth in our own membership is because we have praised the ministry of the spirit in our services. We have shared a vision and we have uh, we have tacted. Uh, uh, the problems of the people they are facing according to the teachings of the, of the scriptures.
positive growth in Christian communities are often ignored by critics. One writes, if Samoa is to continue moving forward, she must confront and heal the wounds of the past, most notably the suppression of her indigenous traditions by Judeo-Christian missionaries. Another cried censorship and quotes a friend, the missionaries came with a Bible in one hand and a chisel in the other. Still others say the missionaries forced Samoans to accept Christianity. I disagree. Because the mayor of the Tapua Inga, ah, or the Fakurunga, that's something sacred, no longer like Samoa. Because I know my missionary lack of attitude, and they must be so on the Ola, but Shoki Samoa. If the Europeans go somewhere, everything within that culture is, um, is vacant, they have to be destroyed. Everything they bring must be forced on us, and that was not the case in Samoa. They came with a concept which is right in the heart of a salmon life. To say that the Samoans were actually sort of cajoled or forced to, or, or under huge pressure to accept that, uh, would probably be a statement which underestimate the intelligence of the Samoan people who accepted Christianity. I mean, they, like any other human being anywhere in history, anywhere in the world, uh, uh, were confronted with different ideas and different ideologies and they carefully weighed things up and, and say, okay, I'm going to make the decision to accept this. Uh, I mean, they came with the Bible, as Albert says, and, and a chisel, but our people decided whether to accept them or not. But we, we can't also uh, have a blind eye on the negative implications of how Christianity was brought and how people were brainwashed, things like that. Samoans may have beaten their spears to pruning hooks with the arrival of Christianity, but Christians who carried the cross to other nations also bore the sword, and wherever that sword landed, it did much damage. Some of the evil deeds committed throughout history may have indeed been committed by Christians, say historian John Woodbridge. When that has happened, they've acted contrary to the teachings of Jesus. Christianity was brought up together with what they thought was civilization, civilized, and the Western world was civilized, and so they brought the gospel as a form of civilization. It came with a Western flavor or a Western pot, just like a plant. Plant is the gospel, and then they planted it in, in a Western pot. And when they came to Samoa, uh, it took a long time for them to, you know, to, to take the, the plant off from the western pot and planted it into the Samoan soil. We are doing that as well, because that's what needs to be done. They, they gave that gospel in Samoan contents. My, my, my strategies for Samoa. And man, they criticize us over there to historians. Melsawa Samoa Papua. That's how, what are the tra strategies of Kako? Or the other men, our, 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 The missionaries may not have taken a whip to their Samoan proselytes, but some allurge. Williams bribed them with merchandise. The missionary's own account contradicts the claim. When Chief Matitao promised he'll place his people under instruction in exchange for a missionary, Williams told him that any kind of cohesion to induce men to become Christians was contrary to the principles of Christianity. The London Mission Society ah, gave them a very clear directive. Ah, I to work with others I try to ram things down their throat. 
but you gotta find a way where we work together in mission. But the culture like yeah, yeah, and that's exactly what the missions we did to Masamba. There is something in the history of the church, if I know historians or the weight of the will or some of of opinion, some own opinion. I always in a in a I direct the Elmerna some more. I I have a come for you in my for some. And usually, all the, the, the force of Samoan reaction always wins. One scholar assumes the eradication of Samoan religion and culture, then poses the question why were we so ready to teach our old beliefs? Indeed, Christianity spread quickly in Samoa, but not all Samoans readily teach their beliefs. Many resisted and, in fact, fought the converts. As for the Maliator, he accepted Christianity primarily because of a certain prophecy. It was Maliator that did it. Maliator said before he died, Now, Samoa, I will take all the glory of a paramount chief down to grave, to my grave. But it does see there to wait up, what are you saying more? Now there to all the land. It intrigues me how uh, our ancestors readily accepted Christianity, seeing that we had our own uh, Takoinga. But if we, if we remember, uh, they arrived at a time when Samoa was at war. And they've been at war for so many years. And I believe that uh, in some of the writings, they say that the warriors from both sides would come and eat together in, uh, in the mornings. And then they would do some uh, fear fear and stuff. And then they would each retreat to their side, wait a few minutes, and then start the war again. It tells uh, some people that um, they, were, they were tired of the war. They, they wanted it to end. And so when Christianity came, it was like uh, brought from heaven to stop this madness. A Christian critic notes, the missionaries arrive uninvited. They assume the native's traditional spirituality is defective, even devilish. In the process of trying to save the people, the missionaries wind up destroying them. There was that uh, uh, classification of people, okay, classification of cultures. This culture is superior, this culture is inferior. All those kinds of, of uh, elements that came together with the gospel. But the so-called colonial mentality is not limited to Europeans. Despite assertions that men and living things are equal under traditional beliefs, Samoans themselves admit their culture classifies people based on origin, family, rank, marital status and even skin color. Uh, of course we Samoans, uh, we, we say we are not racist, but if you look at our language, the language tells you there are a lot of terms there that uh, you sort of look at somebody with a racist uh, uh, viewpoint. The Christian mes message of, you know, everybody is equal before God was, was directly contradicted to the system that we had. Uh, you know, when we have a very hierarchical system based on this chief and that chief and the hist historical origin of, of the titles and things like that. Samoans may have called the Palangi sailing gods, but it's also revealing they were the first in the Pacific to fight for and win independence from the sailing gods. Almost a century after John Williams, one of Samoa's fathers demonstrated in the fight for independence what some consider a very Christian act. When members of the Mao came under the Palangi attack, Tupua Tamasese stood in a line of fire and called for peace. A bullet struck him. On his deathbed, he appealed to his people. My blood has been spilled for Samoa. I am proud to give it. Do not dream of avenging it, as it was spilled in maintaining peace. Historian Michael Field calls the moment perhaps the finest in the history of the Mao.
Ulfalo, allo le azamo. Ul levang suifu. Eo o mai ar kala leu ul levang suifu azamo. Some suggest Samoan Sydney Christianity. They were already a godly people. They possess aloha and faalo, love and respect. One maintains Christianity and then alter those values. Not only did the Christians alter Samoan values and vice versa, they also altered lifestyle. They encouraged uh, farming, they encouraged the building of houses, they encouraged uh, mass productions, things like that. Some say the missionaries came to do good and they did well. But history also shows natives desired material things. Samoans were already selling and trading before the missionaries. Certain Melanesians take the desire for merchandise further with the so-called cargo cults. They appeal to the gods for European merchandise without the Europeans. When we criticize missionaries or Papalangi for destroying our culture and yet live and talk as Papalangi, are we not practicing a modern form of cargo cult? Vero so ka ka sabo ya sonye. Polar ko inga fa mayama mai. Conservative fi fi lang. Ah. Singa va yer ke fungi da ka dum e. O ke fi fi so ke fungi fa pe nga. Ka ka ngo ka maru mai e fi fi so pu sa isa. Mai va ya ku da ka gusire ka ke fi o nu sila. Very good sa. So po ya ko inga fa mai conservative mai. E va ya mai o yo ke fi o fo. Ish. Ya mai fa pa po e fi de mu ka ko ra ki. Ah. <laughs> the Safaya from our boss seemed like a combination of the old and new. There was the usual blessing, the gathering of our roots and the oratory. What's new were youngsters looming behind Matai with iPads and cell phones and spectators volunteering advice. Listening to the exchanges, it struck me Matai were among the first missionaries to neighboring islands. Church historian Falto Essay writes that Williams asked for nine volunteers. 34 stepped forward. Of the 12 selected, half were Matai. These men were hardly pushovers, said Pastor Etapati Panama. <laughs> they were warriors, Dor, who gave up their clubs for a different kind of weapon. What if their ancestral Tangaloa and village idols? Why did they abandon them for the God of Christianity? We didn't worship idols, you know, but we worship the fish. Where I come from, we worship the shark. We worship the octopus. What does that mean? It means looking at the other creatures as gods. That became the individual God. Like, for example, if an individual God is a God, God We have a, a universal God, Tangaloa. To Yatua writes, Tangaloa was progenitor of all living things and with whom man shared divinity. All life forms are issues of Tangaloa, from the heavens, moon and stars through to the sea, the trees and land, and including all animals and mankind. Tangaloa is both male and female. We are One of those creation stories with some substance in it. 
very deep philosophical expressions of how we look, uh, how our ancestors look at the world around us. Yeah, but the creation story in the Bible is, is a very good one as well. Huh? How the Hebrew writers brought all those different stories from the Middle East and, 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 and made such a very beautiful final composition. There is more evidence of the Big Bang Theory than the Adam and Eve Theory. If you, if you look at the science, uh, there's a, a whole number of things where you know, life started from, from uh, germs. Let's ask, if you look at, uh, at uh, you know, okay, the, the, the story about the ilo. Tangaloa had a fue, wild vine. And this wild vine, when Tangaloa put, put it down on the ground, there grew the maggots. So do you believe that we we grew up of maggots. You look at the pear. It's really, it's really the story of creation. All those are invited to leave. You know, it's about the plumber that Tangaloa sent out. Let's look at the science of it. You start with the rock and the ashes, and then you have the thing about tapu. You come to the story of Tangaloa sending out the tuli to discover these islands and to populate it, etc. The story of the Tuli is still applicable today because you have the Tuli, uh, you know, uh, spawning in uh, Siberia huh? and then coming out, you know, to all these spaces. And the science is that tree life in these volcanic islands was through the birds. There's much in the science that supports our theory of creation. Uh, not that I'm saying that I'm knocking the whole Bible. Uh, I'm saying that God spoke to the Hebrews uh, and God spoke to our parents. Uh. If God spoke to both the Hebrews and the Samoans, why would he give them conflicting stories? Tuya Tua writes, in the Samoan creation myth, there is no Adam and Eve, no Eden or tempting snake. Earth and all living organisms, including humans, originated from a Big Bang, the tumultuous separation of Flangi, heaven, and Papa, rock. The Bible speaks of an infinite God who formed the earth at his command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. In Samoan mythology, Tangaloa, the creator of all living things, was himself created. If Tangaloa has a beginning, is he mortal? I don't think he was mortal. Uh, it would have been very uh, controversial if he was. Uh, he cannot justify your ancestry and say that it's holy if you supernatural if you if you attribute it to somebody who is immortal. I am my foil ali ne kuwa ne faka au komerkala ni dey. Ma ko ko samu. I said if ko shali am ko samu ya kangalo alang. Pe I said he ma ya kire ka ko shuilo. Ayo or kangalo ne lo le le kuwa ne lo lang ya ko. Have a problem with that. Because the, the God of the Bible is the God of the Hebrews. Tangaloa is the God of the Polynesian people. But they are both... What I mean is that the idea of a universal God is the same. But the God of the Bible is the God of the Jewish people. But Tangaloa is the God of the Samoan. We can't say that they are the same. But the idea is the same. Idea of God... Uh... Uh, it's the same everywhere. It doesn't really matter which society you're talking about, whether it's traditional or, or non-traditional or pre-Christian or post-Christian. The concept of God is, is somebody or a person uh, to whom all the unanswerable questions are referred to for, for explanations. <laughs> 
Samoan concept of people with power also exists in other cultures. Researcher Pody Harsh found a real Hercules in Greek genealogy, who was later mythologized into a card. Confucius was a person of antiquity elevated to card-like status. The same is true of Jupiter, Thor, Cronus, and Poseidon. Kutangaloa had been a person of great note, whom ancient Samoans later elevated to God. But Pali'i shares an alternate view of Tangaloa based on how certain beings were traditionally thought to have been conceived. <laughs> We had no records of how he relates to people. There are lots of uh, theological students uh, here in Samoa and throughout the Pacific who are uh, trying to to bring in Tangaloa as part of uh, of the, of the current uh, uh, worship. Uh, you referred to Tuyatua uh, saying that uh, Tangaloa is the same as our God now. Uh, to me, that's an exercise in joining, joining the dots, trying to rationalize and make sense of what we are now. I say no to that. Lou had a, a flock of, of chickens. And then Tangaloa Langi wanted to eat the chickens. So he sent his young men to catch the chickens of Lou. And then Lou was a warrior. So he was so mad when he learned that Tangaloa and his men had killed his chickens. Lu decided to fight Tangaloa and his men because he was mad they were going to punish Tangaloa. He physically was already a coffee ice of Moses. When Tangaloa's daughter named Langi Tuaiva or Lea Moa, her other name is Lea Moa. So when she, she realized and she learned that Lu and his men are coming to fight her father. She used her role as a Tamaitai Samoa. Tamaitai Samoa, she is the savior of the family. That's why the Samoan ladies are called Tausala. Because she offered herself to Lu. Well, excuse the language, but she laid down on the way where Lu was coming. She laid down there naked. Why? Because she was offering herself to Lu. I say, instead of saying, Lu, do whatever you want with me. Don't touch my father. What we call the ninth heavens, the, the heavens are the mountains over at Fangaloa. On the ninth one, Tangaloa lived there. That's not heaven. Or cloud nine. <laughs> the gods are said to dwell on mountains. God of the Bible met with his people on certain mountains. 
Evidence that strongly suggests myths such as Tangaloa came from the Hebrew account rather than the other way around. What is the name Tangaloa Langi? Does it provide a clue to his identity? The meaning of the word Tangaloa is endless freedom. The Upulangi, a few oil like oil low langi, a oil like oil so if we fava vow, or the Upu fava vow, polva vow, a kusama upule fasha moa moa de loa. If Tangaloa dwells in heaven and is God of the Bible, why isn't he mentioned in Samoan worship? He's dead already. They killed him. The missionaries. No, not dead in the same in the sense of dying like a mortal god, but uh, in the sense of uh, of planting the God of the Bible and teaching the Samoan people to get rid of all the other gods. But uh, there is a way that we can go back and say, put down a law in the Bible. Take off Jehovah. Put down a law to replace him. What's wrong with that? One problem is, replacing Yahweh with down a law violates both the Bible and Psalm 1 oral tradition. Some insist the differences between the two are irrelevant, since Psalm 1s were already a godly people who practiced love, alofa, Long before the missionaries. We are like a lot of people of Kusolva and a little color lace. I yay yay can't cast a more more. I love Kilay law. Salako law for ye like cool like a walk on a law like. I live up in a maquai malamalama pay on malamalama. We are young pongi in a wall mercalli. Le cooles are fine and if there's a cow maki maki can come a lame again going muffle folk and some more more. Let's all go for pay. In an effort by the by the by the missionaries to sort of you know look at the pre-Christian time as a time of darkness. And therefore, whatever you worshipped, where he took. And the only true God was the Atua that they brought with them. But now we are trying to bridge that by saying Atua also refers to Tangalo. One way to bridge Christianity and Samoan ancient belief is to keep both equal standing under any number of worldviews. Another is to marry the two under a process called syncretism. How do I blend? How do I marry? You know? my Samoanness with my Christianity because both of them are divinely inspired and when you come down to the Tintac you will find that there's no disconnect that they're one and the same thing that's why it's very important that uh, the great minds of theology, Samoans, must come together and find a theology that, that's born, that's screaming out of our legends and our history. Uh, Tangaloa then be Jehovah and then be Jesus at the same time. If we go for the, I mean the, the Greek understanding of, of things, but we have our own some own ways of doing it. The Genesis account of the creation and the and the making of man is the product of many stories. Okay? Mesopotamian stories, Babylonian stories, Assyrian stories. They were all uh, refined and collected by the Hebrew writers and then made this final story their own story. The Hebrews have got the advantage, you know, because, you know, they've had uh, thousands of years to develop their theology, their whatever it is, and some of the best minds in the world have focused on it. Uh, we're coming into this thing rather late in the piece. Uh. According to Maulolo, the blending of Christianity and Samoan culture began with the translation of the Bible. The role that Jesus was playing was like an orator. Ah, Edwila, Solo Macau Pulongadi. Ah, Cacaro de Cua. 
famelo o awona le vele fio ya yesu la lemba wa ku pere ku mai kosa yesu ola lo le di a vele fio le tu ti sire se a o mai la o le nga lu e fa ku la fa de associate lo a o pu ya a vele nga na sa mo a ile tu la fa le o tu ya yesu ona maliu wa ne ai le o ya ikapa na o le o pu maliu e a vele tu la fa le ona feta la i mai le o yesu Yere mau el kuspa ia le fa kasa fa pe mai ah ona sa uno mai le o Yesu pe u malele mai Yesu nao ona feta lai mai le o Yesu u pe feta lai ave kula fa le de vesi kamari we can say that Jesus Christ has a tattoo just to to indicate his service and his tattoo to his father in heaven and in the someone context well, that is like the, 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 the duty of the young man with the Soma Imiti. The tattoo is uh, the La A or Samoa, and on that La A is written every intricate little important icon of Samoa. Kakao is the rite of initiation into manhood, is for Samoa. Can we use that as the rite of initiation into the church? The Roman church leads the way in utilizing traditions in worship, outside the church, and all ritual beckons, the Sa'ir dance. <laughs> Because God is family, uh, you are taunting God uh, in that thing. You're saying, okay, fair enough, you've taken one of it. Yeah, but so long as I have my penis, yeah, I can still make another person. Uh, it's, it's rather a, a gauche or a rough way of saying, look, you know, uh, not, notwithstanding that you can take life away, uh, I too share divinity, I can make life. There are traditions many feel should remain in the past. That was one of them. When I was young, I've seen groups of men from one village coming to our village. So afterwards, after their entertainment here, they would run away with some of the girls of my village. Or the men, the women from another village came to, they, they were performing concerts, and at the end, they were running away with the men of my village. But these men have their wives and children. Would we want our, our daughters you know, to, to be like that? Ah. The same concern is raised about nakedness. Some feel it was a natural thing until the missionaries came. Tuyatua writes, the guilt and shame surrounding nakedness and sexuality is endemic to Christian, rather than indigenous culture. เดี๋ยวเราโหวไม่รู้เลยเลยหมดปุ๊งอีปอเสียปกเกเลยพวกเนี่ยเอกกาวได้สิกาลอดฟันกูมันปอเราโอ้ยงานละสามไม่ได้
The missionaries did utilize certain traditions. One of them is Ifonga, a public ceremonial request for forgiveness. But not all Ifonga end well, and if Tangalo had no written moral codes, what kind of pre Christian Samoans? The missionaries answer In the beginning, God created man in his image. He also set eternity in man's heart, so that man knows instinctively what's good and what's evil. Christian author Robert Goffrey notes, God has so deeply planted the need for himself in human beings, that when we do not know the true God, we invent false gods, false religion, and false worship. <laughs> Those people that think that Kangaloa is the God of Samoa should now believe that their belief of Tangaloa should be realized as their belief of Jesus Christ. Because Kangaloa didn't die on behalf of us. It's only the Jesus uh, believers that need to be saved because they have this Jesus that saves. The God and the faith that I have, uh, it doesn't, I don't need a savior. I was born into this world as a part of this world. The little air that I breathe in and breathe out is that's the little air that's going to put life in some little plant somewhere. And so when we all come together and breathe out the same, we're going to bring a forest together. And this is a part that I play and we all play in this. <laughs> But Pasatino also knows Samoa has beautiful tradition, including respect, love for family and service, Tautua with a smile. Wherever they go, Samoans live as Samoans. Traditions help them adapt to new lifestyles and guarantee support in time of crisis. Falavilavi. Samoan children learn language and culture in school. But what will become of their generation when they're also taught that man or culture is a measure of all things? Or that the Christian faith of their parents is part of Western colonialism and the God of Samoa is really Tangaloa? The search for Tangaloa brought me back to Tamafainga. He was worshipped as a god, until the people, tired of his tyranny, assassinated him. Is Tamafainga the key to unlocking Tangaloa's identity? When looking at different belief systems, common elements emerge. One of the most prominent is they incorporate ancestor worship. Once upon a time, was Tangaloa a mighty man like Tamafainga, who was later elevated to God? A Samoan tradition sheds some light. that they bury their people in front of the house. And the whole purpose of Fononga, I don't call Fono Maitu, like a Kalolako Modi, the spirits of the dead. Hello for my no. Where if I think out? Mayful and now, how in a vessel, you always see called Inga. No, I never fall for no Kunga Mau. They're trying to make connection. You like to Tangata, Manganga, where will Madi do? If the missionaries had not brought Christianity, would the Samoans still have their Tangaloa worship? It's most likely that another religion would have taken over. 
uh, just looking at the way the world operates. Over our ancestral. Oh culture. yes, yeah, yeah. Does it sound like our forefathers were strong enough to hold on to their No, no. I said before that they were very acute observers of what was good for them and what was bad for them and what was beneficial for them. We can just judge now that they did the wrong thing 200 years ago. But I think to some extent that's unfair. Uh, and sort of more or less saying that they were not intelligent enough to make the decisions that they made. Uh, it's easy to do that in retrospect. <laughs> This is my my dilemma. Uh, you know, there's there's always the tendency for for people to try and impose an absolute. Life changes. You can't compare the lives of our parents or our grandparents to the lives that we live. Uh, and the fact that we live different lives. It creates its own, its own environment, its own paradigms, its own uh, uh, idiom, uh, its own idiosyncrasies. And therefore, you have to re-examine the um, uh, ambience in which we live in order to find our bearings. Where is, you know, the truth? We can't stay with a paradigm that may be applicable uh, 20, 50, 100 years ago and say, that is the absolute, that is the truth. That's not possible. Life changes. So some want folk wisdom advices. Or the water alone alone, a prayerful pole for every season. When I set out on the search for Tangalo, it was to look at what I thought was revisionism and intellectual dishonesty in much of today's liberal writings. Though I disagree with His Highness and his friends, his character revealed much that is good in Samoan culture. He exuded the warmth and kindness Samoan culture is known for. Williams himself was impressed with Samoan hospitality. He raved about Samoan nobleness of feeling that gave him an exalted idea of Samoan character. He also believed Samoan religion and culture, like others, may be similar in some ways to Christianity, but it is not Christianity, and it is not redemptive. Still, being a Christian doesn't mean abandoning our Samoanness. It means creating cultures that honor God and benefit others. That's the essence of the cultural mandate. In a book titled Folk Ways, Professor William Sumner writes, the folk ways are the right ways to satisfy all interests because they are traditional and exist in fact. In the folk way, whatever is, is right. This is because they are traditional and therefore contain in themselves the authority of the ancestral ghosts. We may feel this way about Tangaloa because he is traditional, or perhaps his name, Endless Freedom, expresses a desire to create our own story and God. But aren't we mistaking an ultimate reality with our idea of the same? What is this tonight? That is a picture of a basket. No. That is a picture of a basket. This is a basket. All together. What is this? That is a picture of a basket. Not all religions are equally true, nor do they point to the same destination. Arthur Timothy Demi observes. A religion with some truth does not legitimize the entire religion. So who is Tangaloa? The most plausible answer given the evidence is, he was a man elevated to God's status and worshipped as a god, much like Tamafanga. Support comes from Tuyatua himself. He writes some one religion passes a thesis that places Tangaloa as ancestor. Styles of ancestor worship may vary from culture to culture. Some recognize demigods, others didn't. A few of these gods or immortals, Bodhi Hodge noted, were crossovers with other cultures. What made them immortal? It was usually their age. They outlived everyone else. In the next documentary, we'll look at cultural Christianity and ask the question, do Samoans really believe Mata Nyufiangai Malata is their greatest style? Uh, what is the Uwa Umea Uwa Ai Ai?
Malai umale to fioa Anale malai ima unga ua fa a soa soa ae o pura pura Si ali iniwe si ali iolo tuma Ole ma a ua la foa ina e tu funga i lata meana maua Ai au palu palu